Hello and welcome to Algebra 1, Chapter 9.4, and today we're going to discuss solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. So you've been keeping track of our ways to solve quadratic equations. Way number one was by factoring, and that used the zero product property. Way number two was the square root property, and those were both from chapter eight. Number three, we had solving by graphing, where you're looking for the x-intercepts. Four was completing the square. And then five is the quadratic formula. So you might ask, why is it that we have to have five ways to solve a quadratic equation? And the, the answer is, it's a little bit situational, a little bit what you want to do with it. Um, factoring is probably the fastest way to solve a quadratic if you're decent at factoring. The deal is, though, that not everything is factorable, so you can't just have factoring. Square root is also fairly fast, but it has to be one thing squared, like x squared equals 9, or the quantity x plus 2 squared equals 16. If it's something like that, square root property is really quick. But again, not everything's like that. So graphing takes a while and does not always give you exact answers if they're not whole number integer answers. Um, but graphing can be good if you want to visually see it. So completing the square is great, except a has to be equal to 1, and a is not always equal to 1. And so what we end up with is quadratic formula, and quadratic formula works for anything and everything. So it's not a great answer to why you have five ways, but we got five ways. So what's the quadratic formula? Using our a, b, and c from our standard form, quadratic formula solving for x x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this is going to need to be a formula you have memorized. Okay, There are two answers here, and that comes from that plus or minus. So you would have the plus case. So there would be one answer. And then the minus case would be the other answer. And the great news is that you work them out at the same time, and so there's no real reason to write them out as two separate answers, but just so you can see, those would give you two separate answers there. So let's use the quadratic formula to solve this equation. And first of all, it has to be equal to zero, and we have that, okay, because our, remember our standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So if it's not equal to zero, you need to rearrange it so that it is. And this is one of the few times that if a is negative, that's fine. Right? The other, most of the other forms, if a was negative, you, you wanted to change that. But this time, if a is negative, that's fine. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 35. And I'm going to write out my quadratic formula. If you don't have it memorized, I think that writing it out on every example and every problem is the fastest way to get that memorized. So we're just going to plug in our numbers. So we have a negative sign, and then we're going to put in b, which is negative 2, plus or minus the square root. And this needs to be a negative 2 in parentheses, because that's the way you're going to square it correctly. Minus 4 times a times c. So get those numbers in there all over 2 times a. Once you have your numbers where they go, the next step is to just follow your order of operations. So we're going to clean it up. A negative negative becomes a positive 2 plus or minus the square root. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4 minus. I would multiply those three numbers together. So 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times negative 35 is negative 140, so we get a negative 140 all over 2. And that's going to lead us to the square root of 4 plus 140. 
because the minus the negative is plus there, which is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of 144 all over 2. So the square root of 144 is exactly 12, so we got 2 plus or minus 12 all over 2. So from here, you're going to actually then do the math of doing 2 plus 12, which is going to be 14 over 2 and get 7. So there's one answer. The other answer is 2 minus 12, which is going to be negative 10 over 2 and get negative 5. And those are your two answers. So let's try the quadratic formula again. One thing that you have to make sure of is it's equal to zero. So I'm going to move the 4 over. And it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and someplace write out what is A, what is B, and what is C. After we do that, it's just plug the numbers where they go into the quadratic formula, and in case you've forgotten it, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x equals negative b is negative 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So a negative negative 8 is a positive 8 plus or minus the square root. Negative 8 squared is a positive 64 minus, and if we do 4 times negative 15 times 4, get negative 240 all over 30 which leads us to 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 plus 240 all over 30 okay so 8 plus or minus the square root of 304 all over 30 and then you really want to break down the radicals. And so we're looking at the square root of 304. And you want to ask yourself what perfect squared number goes into that. So remember your perfect squared numbers. Well, 1 is, but 1 isn't going to simplify it. So you have 4, 9, 16, 25. These are all numbers you can take a square root of. Well, so 304 can be 4 times 76. 9 doesn't go into it evenly. Uh, 16 times 19. 25 isn't going to go into it. 36 doesn't go into it. So let's stop right there. We're going to use 16 times 19. So this is the square root of 16 times 19, which is the square root of 16 times the square root of 19 which is 4 square root of 19. Okay, so come back down here to my problem and this is 8 plus or minus 4 square root of 19 all over 30. Now you can't reduce a number under a square root with a number that's not, okay? But I can look at my numbers that aren't, so I'm going to look at the 8, the 4, and the 30. Do they all reduce by the same number? they all reduce by 2. So we're going to reduce all three of those by 2. So we're going to have 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 19 all over 30. And that's your answer, and you're going to leave it exactly like that. That's both answers there, but you can't simplify it anymore because there's a square root in there. And so we leave it. Okay, so let's do one more, I think, with the quadratic formula has to be equal to 0, so I'm going to move my 8m to the other side. So 3m squared plus 8m minus 1. Make sure to write it in descending order. Figure out what your a, b, and c are. a, b, and c. Make sure you know what your quadratic formula is. 
All right, so we're going to have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And it's just follow those order of operations. So we're going to do our exponent and get 64 minus, and it's going to become a negative 12, all over 6, which is going to be negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 plus 12, which is going to give us the square root of 76. And then can I reduce the square root of 76 because that, that's not a perfect number, not a whole number. So, square root of 76 is the square root of 4 times 19. And I just, in my calculator, started by dividing that by 4. So that's going to give us 2 square root of 19. So x equals negative 8 plus or minus 2 square root of 19 all over 6. And if all three numbers, not under a radical, reduce by the same number, you're going to reduce them, and they all reduce by 2, so negative 4, plus or minus. You can put a 1 there if you want, or it's just the square root of 19 all over 3, and that is your two answers. All right, so I did put one more example in here. Um, I'm going to leave this one for us to do in class, and in fact, if you can do this before you come to class, that would be great. Uh, but there's two ways you can do this. You can do this with just saying, okay, a is a half, b is two, c is three halves, right? And just work it out. There's nothing wrong with using fractions. Or if you do not like those fractions, take the entire equation, multiply it by the least common denominator, and that will get rid of your fractions. Okay, see if you can work this one out and we will go over this one in class. Okay. So here's a summary of your five ways and in fact I'm going to edit your five ways here. So we talked about factoring in chapter 8 um, using a table and graphing, I think, are the same thing. So let's add square root property. I don't care what order they are in. But we had factoring in Chapter 8. We had square root property in Chapter 8. Then we had graphing, completing the square, and quadratic formula. Okay. Uh, square root property can only be used sometimes. Um, must be in the form of like x squared equals a. And x can be like x plus c squared equals a. It can be in a form like that too. All right, so make sure you have those written down. So the last thing we want to discuss is the discriminant. And you'll recognize this as the part under the square root. So if I wrote out my quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so this part under the square root is called the discriminant. By the way, this part out front is your formula for your axis of symmetry. So. Okay, we have a discriminant. So it's under the square root. So can you just put any number under a square root? Okay, and it is plus or minus that. So if you do plus or minus, let's say, the square root of a positive number, like 49, that's going to give you two cases to consider. So if this discriminant is positive, you are going to have two real solutions. Now there would be other parts to that, but that would be help you get to those two real solutions. So what happens if you have a negative under that square root, like negative 4? What happens when you type a square root of a negative number into your calculator?
Mine says non-real answer. So if you have the square root of a negative, you are going to have two imaginary or non-real solutions. That would be another conversation for us to have. Um, so what happens if you have zero? So you'd have plus or minus the square root of zero. Well, the square root of zero is just zero, and is there any difference between adding zero and subtracting zero? None at all. So you're going to have one real solution. Now, what this equates to, if you were graphing, this is two x-intercepts, this is one x-intercept, that was the vertex on the x-intercept, and this is zero x-intercepts. So it all really relates. And so you can figure out how many solutions you're going to have and what type just by looking at the discriminant. So we want to actually find the discriminant for the, these two equations and then determine the number of real roots we're going to have. So just like before, it has to be equal to 0. So minus the 12 over. And your discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So we're going to look at 10 squared, because that's a, b, c, minus 4, a, c. And just following your order of operations, this is 100 minus negative 144, which is going to be 100 plus 144, which is 244. So that's my discriminant. It's positive, so I'm going to have two real solutions. And the next one, so there's A, B, C, so we're going to have B squared, and any time you're putting in a negative, put it in parentheses, minus 4 times A times C, so this is positive 4 minus 4 times 4 times 14 is a 224, so this is a negative 220. There's my discriminant, it's negative, so there are zero real solutions, or real roots. All right, that's what I have for you for this section. Let me know if you have any questions, and if not, I will see you in class next time. Have a great day.